out of the fog, out of the night, and into sure it comes Bulldog Drummond. This story begins in a surprising way. Listen, walked across the street to where my new Buick was parked. The surprise I mentioned was a blonde package done up attractively in a shimmering patina fox jacket. I opened the car door, and there she was in the front seat. Hello. As I said, the car was new. I looked twice to make sure it was mine. It's your car. I recall the dealer telling me you came with it. A good deal has nothing to do with my being here. Oh, well, what has? Get in and we'll talk about it. I've been waiting here for you. Oh, you should have said I would have gladly passed up dessert. No, Captain Hugh Drummond. You know me. Well, who doesn't? You help people in trouble. In certain cases, tell me you're in trouble. I am. Will you help me? It's possible. I um, don't believe I know your name. Virginia. Virginia Morris. Miss? Miss. It's quite possible. You're nice. Oh, well, Virginia. My friends call me Ginny. Then friend to another, Ginny, just what sort of trouble is it? It's about the cat. The cat? This one. It's no porcelain to go there alone. That's why I came to you. I didn't want him to see me going to your house. He warned me not to tell anyone. That's why I waited for you in the car. You will help me, won't you? Uh, first, you'll have to make some sense. Well, what is this all about? Ralph brought this cat back from China six weeks. My brother, he was there on business. Ralph said the cat was very valuable. He said it's hundreds of years old, and he asked me to hold it for him. That was six weeks ago, as I said. The next day, Ralph left the house. I didn't hear from him until this evening. And your brother told you not to tell anyone about it. Oh, no, no, it wasn't Ralph who said that. It was the other man. Yes. And he spoke to me over the phone after Ralph. Ralph just said a few words, and then the man must have taken the phone away from him. He told me to bring the cat to him at 22 River Street, but he'd be in the doorway. I was to be there at 9.30, but you see, I was afraid to go there alone, so I came to see... I'm sorry I was detained, oh. sir. A phone call came in, and... Oh, Captain Drummond. Uh, Denny, this is Miss Morris. Uh, where did she come from? Believe it or not, she was waiting here in the car for me. A likely story. Uh, Ginny has asked my assistance. Oh, it's Ginny. Captain Drummond, we better hurry. He's said to be there by 9.30 sharp. Come on, Denny, get in. Uh, you're sure I won't be crowding you? Do you you um, say the number was 22 River Street? Yes, that's right. River Street, sir? Why are we going to that wretched neighborhood? Because Miss Morris's brother seems to be in some sort of trouble. It's a matter of life and death. Life and death, that's the usual story, isn't it, sir? That isn't a joke. I didn't finish what I started to tell you, Captain Drummond. The man said to me that Ralph would be killed if the mink cat wasn't delivered tonight. Oh, mink cat. Sir, that's it. That's just what he said, the mink cat. What are you talking about, then? The phone call which detained me. It was a man. He sounded oriental. I thought it was just another one of those crank calls we saw. Uh, Denny, there. for heaven's sakes, come out with it. What is it? He said to forget about the mean cat. It's evil. He said to those who touch it, it brings only bad luck and death. Sir, this area is forbidding enough without having a pea super to make matters worse. Denny, you can count this far the blessing. It'll come until we get to that doorway up the street. Uh, Ginny, I'll take that china cat now. Oh, but you said that as long as the cat was in our hands, you thought Ralph's life would be spared. I'm reasonable. Now, don't worry, I'm not letting go of it until your brother is brought back safe and sound. You'd better let me have it. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Come on, Denny. Oh, Jack. Captain Drummond, this gives me the creeps. Frankly, Denny, I know just how you feel. Oh, well, thing to hear coming from you, sir. You know how I rely on you for moral support. Number 22 is the next building. Ready? Ready, sir. Actons. I'll do the talking. That dubious pleasure is all yours. Let us go. Why, no one's here. Perhaps he's inside. We'll have a look. Switch on your flash. Yes, sir. Well, look. The entrance is boarded. Now, Denny. Quick, cut the light. Denny? I'm, I'm all right, sir. That flashlight made us a perfect target for a moment there. The shots. Someone was lying in wait for us over there. Oh, dear, we're certainly lucky. We certainly are, Denny. 
This mean cat didn't break when I dropped out. Maybe it isn't such bad luck after all. Oh, the devil with that confounded cat, sir. Look what it got us into. Well, now let's see if it can get us out of it. What? We're getting back to Ginny in the car as quickly as our feet can carry us. With an armed killer across the street? I told you the fog is a blessing. It will cover our retreat just as it did our advance. Uh, let's hope. I get set to run for it. Follow me and stay close by. We made it. Yes. Maybe you were right about that mean cat after all, sir. It was luck so far. I hope it'll do as well for Jenny Morris. Huh? What do you mean, sir? She's not in the car, Denny. I wish I knew what this was all about, sir. Why we were shot at. Why Miss Mothers disappeared. Why she lied to us. What's the answer to it all? Denny, I haven't the slightest idea. But I'm sure everything will be made clear to us in time. You really think this mean cat will get us the truth? I think it will attract the fish we want. Now, let's go up to our apartment and wait for a nipple. Stay right where you are. Oh, sir, she, she has a gun. Yes, and I'll use it if either one of you try anything. You see, Denny, what did I tell you? A bite. And we haven't even cast our wheel. Give it to me. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I saw with you in this car before. She gave you the cat, didn't she? The cat? Uh, Denny, I wonder what on earth this young woman is talking about. Well, I, I, I'm sure, sir. I, I, I haven't the slightest notion. The cat that's on your lap. Oh, dear, dear. How clumsy of me. Hand it over. Yeah, I, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I was sure I had it hidden from view. Yes, well, the damage is done, Denny. This young woman and her automatic appear to mean business. You'd better hand it over. Yes, sir. Here you are. Now, don't move. Stay right where you are. Where did you get this cat, huh? You answered that question for yourself a moment ago. Yeah, what'd you do with the other one? The other one? You know what I'm talking about. Now, where's the other one? Isn't this one satisfactory? No, you can't fool me. I know. I know all about it. I'll show you how much I know about it. Here. Oh, wait. Sir, she broke it. She deliberately destroyed that relic. Oh, stop it. Stop acting. You know as well as I do that it was a fake. You know it wasn't worth two dollars. Evidently, Jenny, our bait wasn't as valuable as we thought. But it serves the purpose. Can you tell me where the real one is? Tell me or I'll kill both of you. Well, that would be rather difficult, considering the fact that you neglected to release the safety on that gun you're holding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what? I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> Don't you know it isn't stylish for attracting young women to sport these things? It just isn't being done this season. <laughs> there. Well, it's much better without it. Really. Here, Danny, take this. With pleasure. Let go of me! Let go of me! You're hurting my arm! A fisherman always holds tight till he lands his quarry. Right, Denny? Right, sir. Please, let me go! Let go of me! Oh, I wouldn't think of it. After all, if I hadn't tricked you out of that gun, you might have no. eliminated Denny and me. Oh, no, you wouldn't have been harmed. It wasn't possible. This gun's empty. Not a cartridge in the chamber. What? Look, sir. She's telling the truth. The gun is empty. Not a cartridge in the chamber. All right, Inspector, I'll be waiting for your call. Now, go on with your story, Mrs. Haynes. I'm telling you the truth, but you don't believe me, do you? I'll be able to judge better just as soon as Inspector Kelly calls me back from headquarters. In the meantime, go ahead. I didn't know you were Captain Drummond. I thought you were in with them. I was desperate. I'd do something to find my husband, Frank. Oh, dear, another mysteriously missing male. This routine is being a bit overused tonight, eh, sir? To the point of boredom. Well, it's the truth, just as I told it to you. Frank was to meet me when my boat docked. I was bringing the mink cat back from the Orient. Frank had a buyer for it here. You went through that before. That blonde girl who calls herself Ginny Morris met you at the dock. She was supposedly taking you to your husband. Instead, you were taken to a hotel room where you were drunk. Yes, and when you awakened, the mink cat was gone. You were unable to locate your husband. Then you received a phone call this evening. A man told you that if you waited in front of this apartment house tonight, you'd find both your husband and the Ming Yes, cat. yes, that's how I happened to see that woman and Captain Drummond in the car. A fascinating tale, but completely unbelievable. Uh, it's usually customary to report such things to the police. Well, I told you I did report my husband's disappearance. Yes, so you said. Uh, Mrs. Haynes. Yes, Captain Drummond. On two occasions, you've mentioned the fact that you surmised that I was involved with them. Now, we know of the girl who calls herself Ginny Morris. What do you mean by them? Who are the others? I don't know who he is. When I was taken to the hotel room, there was a man there. He said he was a friend of Frank's. But he wasn't. I never saw him before in my life. I... Uh, I'll get it, Denny. Hello? Oh, yes, Inspector. I see. 
There is, huh? Where? Hmm. Well, thank you very much, Inspector. Goodbye. Well, sir? Evidently, Denny, Mrs. Haynes here has been telling the oh. truth. She did report her husband's disappearance to the police. Inspector Kelly tells me they found him. Now, Frank, they found him? Well, where, where is he? I'm sorry, Mrs. Haynes. What do you mean? What's wrong? A man identified as Frank Haynes jumped from an eight-story window of a downtown office building at six o'clock this evening. What? Your husband, Mrs. Haynes, is in the morgue. I'll return in a moment to continue our story. Frank Haynes is dead. We supplied the police with a description of the blonde young lady who called herself Jimmy Martin. And then, Denny and I accompanied Mrs. Haynes to the mall. Captain Drummond, must I... I'm sorry, Mrs. Haynes, but identification of your husband's body is necessary. This way, please, it's the door just ahead. Number five, then. Yes, sir. All right, Captain Drummond. Mrs. Haynes. Captain Drummond, please, I can't... It get... has to be done, Mrs. Uh, Haynes. I just lost it, and we can leave. All right. Oh. Captain Drummond. What is it? This, this body. Isn't that right? Captain Drummond, this isn't my husband. Now, right here, Denny, is the window he was supposed to have jumped out of. But it wasn't a suicide. Well, how do you know, sir? Well, it stands to reason. The death of the unidentified man was another part of another act. Someone wanted Mrs. Haynes to believe that her husband was dead. They thought that a fall from an eight-story window would smash the body beyond recognition. They missed their guess on that point. Yes, but the elevator man told us that the man came up to this floor alone last night. He came up alone, Denny. But he wasn't alone when he stood at this window. I'm convinced he was pushed out by whoever stood here with him. Well, how are you going to prove that? Come along. Where to now, Dale? They're going to cover every floor of this building. There are five stories above this and seven below. Now, you work from here down and I'll work up. And what do I look for? I want to know the nature of every business in this building. Maybe just a waste of time, but it's worth a plot. I mounted the dim lit stairs... Then he went down to check the floors below. Nothing of unusual interest on the 9th, 10th, the 11th. And then, as I walked along the 12th floor corridor, I stopped suddenly. I stood before the door where the black letters on the dusty glass panel spelled out J.R. Andrews, importer of Oriental Antiques. I opened the door and walked in. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, what is your pleasure? Why, I've taken a recent and intense interest in Ming porcelain. Oh, yes, Ming. Well, you see, workmanship in porcelain reached a great and glorious climax under the Ming dynasty. Uh, genius was in the fingertips of the hands of the lowest worker as he sat at his molding wheel. Your acquired interest, sir, is a demonstration of taste of the highest order. I'm particularly interested, Mr. Uh, uh, is it Andrews? Yes, I am, Mr. Well, Mr. Andrews, I'm particularly interested in one Ming piece. One, sir? What is that, may I ask? The figure of a cat. A cat with a rather enigmatic grin on its face. Oh, sir, your taste is not only excellent, it is superb. Well, thank you. You select the perfect Jew among Jews, the Ming cat. You have one in stock? In stock, sir? <laughs> one does not stock the Ming cat. Oh, sir. Forgive me, Captain. I'm only an amateur. But uh, I perceive you are a man of good intentions notwithstanding. I'm sure I can obtain the object for you. Uh, you have uh, been told the price, sir. Uh, uh, yes, yes, the, the price is a griffle. <laughs> it's a warm pleasure of understanding mine, sir. Uh, this way, please. Uh, oh, Virginia, my dear, our buyer has arrived earlier than expected. Well, Hello. Oh, you fool. You stupid fool. Virginia, what's wrong? This isn't the buyer. What? Oh, this is Drummond. Drummond! Oh, no, I, I don't believe it. He was such a gentleman. Sorry to disappoint you. Miss Morris is quite correct. 
Jenny, I've been looking forward to our meeting again. Oh, the world is filled with deception. Each day more of my faith in mankind is washed away. Oh, keep quiet. You've got nothing to a fine spot. I rather enjoy it. How long can it last? Oh, I spoke too soon. That's a talking end of a 45 you're feeling, your back buster. I thought the sensation was unpleasantly familiar. Yes, uh, Sid, my boy, you are an angel of salvation. Sure, Pat, sure. I come to hear this guy say his prayers. As they say in the comic books, Drummond, get on your runners. You're doing some skating on thin ice. I say, Captain Drummond, you've no idea how shocked I was when they called me to come down to the hospital. Well, Denny, no more shocked than I was when I awoke and found myself alive in that wrecked car. You know, sometimes, sir, I feel that you have more lives than a cat. A mean captain? Oh, dear, please don't mention that. It's got you into enough difficulty already. Nothing compared to Jimmy Morris and a Mr. Andrews. You found Jimmy Morris? Only fleetingly. The police made a more permanent find. Jimmy and Mr. Andrews were located by the police in Andrews' office in the Packer building. They were both shot to death. Well, I don't understand, sir. Who is Mr. Andrews? And what was Jimmy Morris doing in his office? I'll explain later, Denny. Just now, we're going to park. Well, park? What do you mean? You're dropping off into the men's shop just ahead. Oh, but I don't need anything in the way of apparel, sir. You will only stay in there until he passes. He? What the deuce is this about? The man who's been following us since we left the hospital. Oh, someone's following us. Oh, don't turn around. I want to scare him off. I'll meet him in my own fashion. There, there's the men's shop coming up. Keep your eye on me, but stay at a distance. You got that? Yes, sir. All right, take your oblige now. Good luck, sir. I continued walking. The man in the dark suit followed. I quickened my pace. He quickened his. I slowed. He slowed. And then I came to the corner. I turned the corner quickly and slid up to the building. I stood there, my back pressed against the stone wall, and waited. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, how careless of me. Hey, let go! What's your idea? I was about to ask you the same question. Hey, look, mister, I ain't looking for no rough stuff. Oh, that's too bad. You see, I'm just in the mood for it. You were following me. Why? Sure, I was tailing. You're drumming, ain't you? Go ahead. His friend of mine wants to talk to you, so he sends me out to Eagle Eye. His friend says I should bring you with me. Well, first he says I should make positive of yourself. So now you should come with me, okay? Just like that, huh? Sure. My friend says you'll come quick as a bunny. What made him think so? On account of my friend says you're a bloodhounding for him. My friend whose name is Frank Haynes. Haynes is shacked in a room on the top floor. Anybody else live in this house? No. Uh, my friend Frank asked me to get him a private layer. My old lady used to run this dump for a boarding house. Here's Frank's room. Come in. Here he is, Frank. I'll bring him like yes. Ah, oh, hello, Drummond. I've been looking forward to this meeting, Haynes. However, I must admit it surprised me to have it develop in such an easy fashion. Well, I knew you'd find me sooner or later. Just thought I'd save you time. Well, that's thoughtful of you. Well, I'm that kind of guy. Of course, you realize your wife is eager to see you, too. So I hear. By the way, I saw your stand-in down at the morgue. I know. You get around fast. Well, sometimes I'm slowed down by unexpected obstacles. I ran into a rather troublesome one this afternoon in an importer's office in the Packer building. I know. Well, you seem to know quite a bit about what goes on. <laughs> I managed. I went downstairs, Frank. Now, uh, wait a minute, Al. Here, yeah, Frank. I promised to pay you off after you brought him here, didn't I, Al? Oh, sure, sure, Frank, but you're good for it. I can wait till... Nah! I want to pay you off in front of Drummond. I want to show him how I handle things. Okay, okay, Frank, just like you say. Yeah, like I say. <coughs> Don't move, Drummond. Why'd you go and do that, Frank? You said we was friends. The only good friends are dead ones. <coughs> ah, now take a look at him, Drummond. Take a good look. That's the way you're going to be. And after you, that wife of mine gets it. You're busy with that gun, aren't you, Haynes? I don't leave loose ends around. It's bad, my business. Andrews, Jimmy Morris, they were part of your business, too, weren't they? That's right. 
They muffed on you this afternoon. I don't muff. That's rather evident. This is what you were looking for, Drummond. This is the McCoy cat. I've suddenly lost all interest in that porcelain figure. A hundred thousand dollars worth. That's all mine. One hundred thousand smackers. No more trouble about it. When you're gone, no more trouble. So I'm sorry. Oh! You all oh. right, sir? Yes, Denny, except for my nervous system. Oh, thank heavens I got up those stairs in time. It certainly was a lucky thing you had me follow you. Well, lucky is much too mild a word, Denny. You've no idea how I felt when I saw you standing there in the doorway with that gun in your hand. I say, sir, look, Haynes isn't moving. Wait a moment. He's dead, Denny. But I aim for his leg. And that's where you got him. Oh, but that shot couldn't have killed him. It wasn't that shot, Denny. It was the one that entered here at his heart. This is the one that killed him. Oh, it's you, Captain Drummond. May we come in, huh? Mrs. Haynes? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, I just can't believe it, Captain Drummond. I, I can't believe it. It's true, Mrs. Haynes. Everything I told you over the phone about your husband is true. But Frank couldn't be like that, no. Yes, he, he was a mad dog, Mrs. Haynes. After Captain Drummond, he was going to kill you. Yeah. Luckily, he was intercepted by me and uh, an unknown assailant. Well, it's all over now. His murder rampage is at an end. Well, why? Why do you do those things? I brought the reason with me. Here it is, this Ming cat. But the way I see it, your husband had this figure stolen from you so that he could reap the profits for himself. Yes. And then he faked his own death to steer you off the track. That's about what it amounts to. Now the Ming cat is yours, Mrs. Haynes. Just as the omen says, it only brought bad luck and death. It's cursed. It's still worth a great deal of money. Well, what does money mean now? Yes, I suppose you're right. It would be far better to destroy it. Uh, probably would. And then there's only one thing to do. Wipe out its curse forever. Well, Captain Drummond. Yes? What are you going to do? Smash this evil cat that... Oh, I don't do... No, as we said, Mrs. Haynes, it's the only moral course to take. Destroy the curse. Oh, oh you broke it. Get away from those pieces, no. Mrs. Haynes. You're wasting your time. Oh, you fool. You're rotten, stupid, interfering fool. What's happened to her, Captain Drummond? You said you had that mean cat appraised. You were told it was a fraud. You said you were almost sure Mrs. Haynes knew it was a fraud. And so she does, Denny. But the cat's great value is not no, in the portal. No, it's not here. No, it's gone. It's so, gone. So, what's this about? It's gone. It's gone. Where is it? Where is what it? is she raving about? This package, Denny. You have it. You want to steal it from me? You want it for yourself? This small parcel, Denny, contains $100,000 worth of narcotics. What? By a prearranged plan, it was smuggled into this country inside the cat by Mrs. Haynes. And then greed prompted the double cross and the triple cross. Triple cross? Yes. Mrs. Haynes was in the house when you shot her husband. It was she who fired the fatal bullet. Well, how did you know? I wasn't sure. It was just a point I had in mind. I went through the theatrics of smashing the cat to bits just to prove the point. I had the package removed from the cat when I learned that the porcelain figure was valued at $3.75. And speaking of felines, Denny, now Mrs. Haynes will learn that justice has one sure way of skinning a cat. That is a murderous one. 